Hey Kevin here from DIYDork.com. Today I'm going to show you how I made this really low ground level floating deck for the front of our house. Our entryway used to not have anything whatsoever, so you'd walk out the front door down about 12 inches onto the sidewalk and it was just really awkward. So I decided to build a proper entryway for it. Now I've never built anything like this before and I was kind of learning as I went, but it turned out to be a really cool project, so check it out. Okay, here's a quick drawing of kind of how I designed the uh, double joist that look on the outside. Okay, I have a 2x10 that will be on the very edge. This is what you'll actually see. 2x10. On the inside, I'm going to have a 2x8. Now, they're different colors, and I'll show you here in a second. But the reason I designed it this way is so that the 2x8 can be sunk down a little bit, and then my one and a quarter inch thick decking can actually sit on top of that and be flush with this outside. It's going to be kind of like... Uh, like a frame around the outside, okay? Like a picture frame. So I just wanted a really nice look. Now normally these would both be level on top and your decking would just go all the way across and sometimes even overhang. But I thought it'd be kind of cool to have this little framing technique. Now my outside boards are called cedar tone. And what that is, is it's a treated wood just like the green stuff, like these boards here, except instead of that yellowish green color, the uh, stuff they put on it actually kind of looks like cedar. So it's kind of a reddish brown color. All right, I saw it look nicer, and then my decking is the same color. I wanted it to kind of match the wood I used for the side of the house. And you can just see the, the huge difference between here. I didn't want to try to stain to match, so we bought some that's actually very similar already. All right, now when I actually build my rim joist, the ones that will go on the two sides, it'll be something like this. Imagine this is a 2x10, let's say this is a 2x8, which would be a little taller, okay? Just like my drawing, it'll be mounted something like that, okay? And then my decking will sit right on top. So we'll have this really cool frame that goes all the way around, all the way around the outside. Then my decking boards start there, and they'll be supported by this little two by eight. So I think I need to actually mount the two by eight first. It'll be flush to the top of this ledger board, and then the bottom of it will sit on my beam, and it's going to sit on the very outside of the beam. So that's why I haven't attached it yet. So how about I just stick, I just uh, start working on it, and maybe that'll uh, make a little more sense when you actually see what I'm doing. Alright, so I'm working on this double rim joist here. As you can see, I have both boards cut, and you can see how much darker that cedar tone wood is than the normal green treated stuff. And it's very close to the uh, wood we have on the outside, so that's why we went with that color. Alright, so I cut them so that they both go out to seven feet, and of course the one in here had to be cut about an inch and a half shorter, so meet up here. And then what I did was I made it flush to the top of this ledger board, and I just quickly toenailed it with a screw. All right. Now the end over here is totally loose, so I can move this wherever I need to to make it square. Now also, I have these little brackets for the outer rim joist. I'm going to slide these over the beam, and then they go under that board for the rim joist, and then they will nail to it and down here. But I'm going to keep it loose until I get this thing squared. I did the same thing over on that side. I just have the inner 2x8 toe nailed at the very top, and then it's loose over here. And again, I don't have the beam attached just yet. I can be able to move everything to make it square. So let me show you a real quick way to make sure everything is square before you start nailing it in place. All right, now if you close your eyes and go back to high school math class, do you remember them talking about the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, that works in construction with triangles to figure out right angles. And, uh, of course, in construction, uh, you kind of dumb it down. They call it the 3-4-5 triangle. So what you do is you take one side of your triangle, measure from the end in three feet, all right? Then from that same end, you know, over here, you measure over four feet. So I did that. Then you just take a tape measure, drop the end over there at the three-foot mark, bring it over here to the four-foot mark, and whenever that little tick mark matches the five-foot, on the uh, measuring tape, it's square. Then I'll just set everything in with nails. It'll be ready to go. And then I'll be able to hook on the outer joist to this board and start moving on from there. Real simple. Alright, so now that all my brackets are nailed down and secure and everything is squared, ready to go, I'm going to start working 
on my double rim choice. So I'm actually starting with the one over here on the side. And I've decided that my 2x8, the green board, is really what's structural. It's the one resting on the beam and it's the one that's actually nailed to the ledger while the outer cedar tone, the brown board, really is just more decorative the way I designed it. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm only going to nail it to this joist from the inside so that way there's no nail heads, no screw heads, nothing on the outside. It'll look nice and clean. And I think I can get away with it this way because like I said it's decorative and it's not supporting any weight of the deck. It's really all in these joists. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, nail it on and what I did to know exactly where this falls and why this is up higher. So if you remember, this is a two by 10 and this one's only a two by eight. And my decking is five fourths, which means it's one and a quarter inch thick. So I actually drew a line that you can probably just barely see in there at one and a quarter inches. So that way when my decking sits on top of here, it'll be flush with this and it'll be a nice little frame. So I just drew that line on there, lined it up, clamped it, and now I can nail it, do the other side and it's ready to go. And then I'll start fitting the front piece. All right, now just to make sure that this double joist is still nice and secure, even though I'm not nailing from the outside, I'm using the same 3-inch uh, 10D galvanized nails that I used to nail the uh, brackets to the beam. Real nice strong nails here. And what I'm doing is every 16 inches down here, I'm nailing four in there, okay? And I'm having two go in. Since they're 3 inches long, if I nail them straight, they might poke through the outside, so I put them at a slight angle. And I'm putting two in an angle facing that way, and two angling that way just to hopefully make it a little extra stronger and then later down the line if it seems like this outer cedar tone colored board is maybe getting a little loose then maybe I'll go ahead and put nails or uh, screws in there to secure it but I think this will actually be really strong especially since it's not structural so I'll finish putting these in and I'll show you how I do the front all right so the front joist board is really simple first of all I made sure that my string was nice and tight at exactly the very edge of where the front of the joist needs to be. And then I strung it all the way across over there. As you can see, the corners of this board touch, but the middle doesn't. That's okay, because when I cut the center joist, I can just, you know, make sure it pushes out a little bit. Alright, so then to attach it was really simple. As you can see, I just took a clamp. I just clamped this board and that board together, a couple of boards like that just to hold it together and then I'm simply just using a little corner bracket very similar to the bracket in back. This one's just a little smaller. I probably should use a smaller one in the back. Alright, so put all the nails in there and then now that one is nice and secure. So now I can just start figuring out where to put all the joist hangers and uh, I'll show all that to you next. I decided before I started hanging my joist to go ahead and put down my landscaping fabric while I have it wide open, and it's pretty simple. I'm just unrolling it. I had to cut it a little bit around the uh, concrete piers. Then you just put a little slit in there, and pop your little stakes in there. Real simple. And uh, the outside looks like a mess right now. I'll have to figure that out later. But we're eventually gonna run our landscaping all the way out about eight foot from the house. So I don't have that quite figured out, but at least I'll get this part covered and then uh, I can put a little gravel in there later, but for now I just need it down so I can start hanging the joists. All right, and then one more thing I need to do before I start installing the joist is to add the splashing on top of the ledger. It goes on real simple. Just kind of slides into place. I had to trim it a little bit to fit in here, and then I'm just nailing it every 16 inches with these little uh, siding nails. Alright, so now that I have that on there, I'm ready to start messing with the joists. Okay, so now I'm ready to start hanging the joists. And if you remember earlier, I had found center of the ledger board here, and I marked a line, and I measured 8 inches that way, 8 inches that way, for my first two uh, joist positions, and then 16 inches in each of those directions. So I did the same thing over here on this front board here, this rim joist. And uh, let's see, where is it? Right there. Marked my center, that little tiny circle. Measured 8 inches over that way at that mark. 8 over that way. And then every 16 inches over. One more thing I did. See that line right there? That's going to mark where the top of my joist needs to go. It's going to be just like over there where the um, outer joist is higher than the actual supporting you know, green board joist. So what I'm going to do is probably start here in the very middle. 
and my joist is going to run right over the top of the beam and it's going to hit, let's see, right over here and I got to make sure the top lines up because I feel that this board probably slumps down maybe just a little bit so I'll have to raise it up to make sure it matches that line also I think I showed you earlier it doesn't quite hit this line so I'll probably have to bump it out just push it out a little bit till it meets that line so anyway I'll do that next and I'll show you so it makes a little more sense than just sitting here trying to explain it to you all right so to start fitting the joist it's really pretty simple just took a tape measure set it up against the ledger measured all the way out to the front joist here the front rim joist and with it being slightly bowed in it was 82 inches so I ended up cutting the ledger I mean the uh, this joist right here at 82 and a quarter inches which ended up making this perfectly straight and it lines up right with my string looks real nice now the only problem and uh, this I, I kind of thought this might happen is of course not all the wood is perfectly straight and I don't know if you can see here See that little tiny line right there, black line? That's where the top of this needs to be. So it's a little high. So I think my best bet is to make kind of a little wedge notch right here. And it'll drop it down. I'll probably have to end up doing it to all the joist boards. For whatever reason, they just don't quite line up where it's supposed to. I'm guessing maybe this board is just slightly bowed down. I thought I had put the crown up, but I guess it wasn't enough. So I think that's my best bet. Go ahead and just cut a little bit of a notch, set this thing down. I'll show you what it looks like when I get it set up and I'll show you how I put it on the bracket. All right, and check it out. Just that little tiny half inch notch did the trick. Look at that, lines up perfectly to the line. The other awesome thing is that because that board was bowed in a little bit, it's keeping this joist wedged in, so I didn't even have to toenail it. All I gotta do now is put my hangers like these underneath and uh, tighten it up. Now the front of the deck is actually supported by this beam but because I don't want any nail or screw heads through the front of the deck I'm gonna go ahead and put some of these hangers up front too. Now I know it's overkill but it's just a nice way to keep it all attached without anything showing from the front. So I'll pop these on and show you what it looks like all put together. Alright, there we go. Got the bracket hooking the uh, joist into the ledger board. I need to trim my um, flashing up here a little bit so it fits down better. That's nice and secure. Then I have these cool little diamond brackets that will hold it to the beam and all the weight will be supported by the beam there. And then just to hold the front rim joist in place, I went ahead and put a hanger there so nothing, hold, nothing uh, shows up in the front. So all I gotta do now is finish the other seven joists and I'll be ready to start putting the decking on.